and welcome to Thursday's edition of the Literary Lutheran Reads of Book of Concord. Today we continue reading through what baptism is, and we will be reading from section 35 to 51. But if the new spirits say, as they are accustomed, still baptism is itself a work, and you say works are of no use for salvation, what then becomes of faith? Answer, yes, our works indeed do nothing for salvation. Baptism, however, is not our work, but God's. For as was stated, you must completely distinguish Christ's baptism from a bathkeeper's baptism. God's works are saving and necessary for salvation. They do not exclude but demand faith, for without faith they could not be grasped. By allowing the water to be poured upon you, you have not yet received baptism in a way that benefits you at all. But it becomes beneficial to you if you have yourself baptized with this thought. This is according to God's command and ordinance, and besides, it is done in God's name. In this way, you may receive the promised salvation in the water. Now, now your fist cannot do this, nor your body, but the heart must believe it. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 to 26, and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. So you see plainly that there is no work done here by us, but a treasure which God gives us and faith grasps. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It is like the benefit of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross, which is not a work, but a treasure included in the word. It is offered to us and received by faith. Therefore, the new spirits violate us by shouting against us as though we preach against faith. For we alone insist upon it as being so necessary that without it nothing can be received or enjoyed. So we have these three parts which must be known about this sacrament especially that God's ordinance is to be held in all honor. The sacrament alone would be enough, even though it is an entirely outward thing. It is like the commandment, honor your father and your mother, which refers to bodily flesh and blood. In these words, we do not think about the flesh and blood, but God's commandment in which flesh and blood are included, and on account of which the flesh is called father and mother. So even if we only had these words, go and baptize, or such, it would be necessary for us to accept them and do them as God's ordinance. Now there is not only God's commandment and injunction here, but also the promise. Because of this, baptism is still far more glorious than whatever else God has commanded and ordained. It is, in short, so full of consolation and grace that heaven and earth cannot understand it. But it requires skill to believe this, for the treasure is not lacking, but this is lacking people who grasp it and hold it firmly. Therefore, every Christian has enough in baptism to learn and to do all his life, for he has always enough to do by believing firmly what baptism promises and brings. Victory over death and the devil, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 6, forgiveness of sin, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, God's grace, Titus chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, the entire Christ and the Holy Spirit with his gifts, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. In short, baptism is so far beyond us that if timid nature could realize this, it might well doubt whether it could be true. Think about it. Imagine there was a doctor somewhere who understood the art of saving people from death, or even though they died, could restore them quickly to life so that they would afterward live forever. Oh, how the world would pour in money like snow and rain. No one could find access to him because of the throng of the rich. But here in baptism there is freely brought to everyone's door such a treasure in medicine that it utterly destroys death and preserves all people alive. We must think this way about baptism and make it profitable for ourselves. So when our sins and conscience oppress us, we strengthen ourselves and take comfort and say, Nevertheless, I am baptized, and if I am baptized, it is promised to me that I shall be saved and have eternal life both in soul and body. For that is the reason why these two things are done in baptism. The body, which can grasp nothing but the water, is sprinkled, and in addition, the word is spoken for the soul to grasp. Now, since both the water and the word make one baptism, therefore, body and soul must be saved and live forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53. The soul lives through the word, which it believes, but the body lives because it is united with the soul and also holds on through baptism as it is able to grasp it. We have therefore no greater jewel in body and soul. 
For by baptism we are made holy and are saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. No other kind of life, no work upon earth can do this. Let this be enough about baptisms, nature, blessing, and use, for it fulfills the present purpose. Infant baptism. Here a question arises by which a devil, through his sex, confuses the world. Infant baptism. Do children also believe? Are they rightly baptized? Briefly we say about this, let the simple dismiss this question from their minds. Refer it to the learned, but if you wish to answer, answer as follows. The baptism of infants is pleasing to Christ, as is proved well enough from his own work. For God sanctifies many of those who have been baptized as infants, and has given them the Holy Spirit. There are still many people, even today, in whom we perceive that they have the Holy Spirit, both because of their doctrine and life. It is also given to us by God's grace that we can explain the Scriptures and come to the knowledge of Christ, which is impossible without the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. But if God did not accept the baptism of infants, He would not give the Holy Spirit nor any of His gifts to any of them. In short, during the long time up to this day, no person on earth could have been a Christian. Now, God confirms baptism by the gifts of His Holy Spirit, as is plainly seen in some of the Church Fathers, like St. Bernard, Gerson, John Huss, and others. These people were baptized in infancy, and since a holy Christian Church cannot perish until the end of the world, the sects must acknowledge that such infant baptism is pleasing to God. For God can never be opposed to himself or support falsehood and wickedness, or for its promotion impart his grace and spirit. This is indeed the best and strongest proof for the simple-minded and unlearned. For the sects shall not take from us or overthrow this article. I believe in the Holy Christian Church, the Communion of Saints. This is the Literary Lutheran wishing you a blessed day.